now if the orbital is empty, there is no need to hybridize it because there is no electrons inside the orbital. Neither this orbital is making any bond, nor this is containing any electrons. So unnecessarily, we will not hybridize this orbital and make it broad and enlarged. So um, if the orbital is empty, we will keep this in pure P orbital form, we will not unnecessarily hybridize this. But the last thing that is left is a pi bond. Now a pi bond is formed by sideways overlapping. Sideways overlapping is an overlapping in which orbitals are side to side with each other and the electronic density from this orbital moves to this orbital and electronic density of this orbital moves to this orbital. Hence, in between the electronic density is common to both the orbitals. Now if I have to carry on sideways overlapping and if I carry it by hybridized orbital, then those hybridized orbital will, one of the lobe of the hybridized orbital will be larger and the other will be shorter. So these are two ways in which I can carry out sideways overlapping. Either I do it with pure P orbital or I do it with sideways over the uh, hybridized orbital. Now sideways overlapping, the extent of sideways overlapping will be more if the lateral area is greater. That means the area with the sideways is greater. Now hybridized orbital is shorter than pure P orbital. So the lateral area available in hybridized orbital is less than pure P orbital. So the extent of sideways overlapping will be lesser in hybridized orbital than pure P orbital. So if a sideways overlapping has to occur, it has to occur with pure P orbital. And a pi bond is formed by, suppose there's a pi bond between carbon and carbon, the second bond is a pi bond. This pi bond will be formed by pure P orbital and not by hybridized orbital. So, now let's boil down all the important points that we have studied under this topic hybridization. Now we have considered these six cases. The first case was sigma bonds. In sigma bond we have these two possibilities. Either the head-on overlapping is by pure P orbital or by hybridized orbital. In case of hybridized orbital, the overlapping feature is greater. So the extent of overlapping is more, the bond will be stronger. A sigma bond is formed by hybridized orbital. If you have to completely fill the electron, either in case of negative charge or in case of lone pair, then in that case, we keep the two electrons, either for a negative charge or for a lone pair in a hybridized orbital to minimize the inter-electronic repulsion to provide more space to make it more stable. So in these three cases, for a sigma bond, for a lone pair and for a negative charge, hybridized orbital is used. And for these three cases, for a free radical, for a pi bond and for an empty orbital or for a positive charge, pure P orbital is used. Because in free radical, you don't have any inter-electronic repulsion, there is no need to keep the electron in a more room. There is no need to give hybridization energy. In sideways overlapping or in case of a pi bond, the sideways overlapping is greater if the lateral surface area is greater and lateral surface area is greater in case of pure P orbital. So a sideways overlapping is formed or a sideways overlapping occur by pure P orbital. And when the orbital is empty, then in case of a plus charge, there is no need to hybridize the orbital. So the plus charge, that means the empty orbital, is kept as a pure P orbital. So this is the bottom line of the discussion. I hope you understood this. Now before we start with finding out the hybridization state of different intermediates. Uh, let me give you the formal definition of hybridization. Hi uh, although we have understood what hybridization is, hybridization is the process of changing the shape of pure orbitals. Now, hybridization occurs when to an atom, then the shape of different orbitals changes simultaneously. It doesn't change one by one, and that process altogether is called hybridization. Now suppose three orbitals are being changing. One is S, S this is spherical and these two are P orbitals, Th these are dumbbells. The best way to understand hybridization is to imagine them to be made up of mud. Initially three orbitals were made, three orbitals were there, you broke this down and then you regenerated three identical orbitals out of those broken muds. So these three orbitals were there previously you mix them and you generate it out of these out of these three identical orbitals. These three are supposed to be identical although they don't look like because my drawing is a bit 
These three are supposed to be identical orbitals and the number of orbitals resurrected out of these three orbitals will be same as the number of pure orbitals you have mixed. So the definition goes like this, hybridization is mixing of pure orbitals of same energy or almost same energy. Same energy happens when both the principal quantum number and azimuthal quantum number are same. Suppose this is 2s, this is 2p and this is also 2p. The principal quantum number is same, 2, 2 and 2. But azimuthal quantum number are different. Here l is 0, here l is 1 and 1. So if the principal quantum number is same, then the variation in energy is less. So these orbitals have almost same energy. These two orbitals have same principal quantum number and same azimuthal quantum number as well. So these two orbitals have exactly the same energy. Um, the energy has to be same or it has to be almost the same. That means at least the principal quantum number has to be the same. So hybridization is mixing of pure orbitals of same energy or almost same energy to generate identical orbitals, same the number as the number of pure orbitals mixed. That means if you have mixed three, then three identical orbitals will be generated. If you have mixed four, then four identical orbitals will be generated. One thing has to be kept in mind, for any hybridization, S orbital has to participate. You cannot have hybridization without S orbital. You cannot have three orbitals, three P orbitals mixing to give three hybridized orbitals. Whenever a hybridization will take place, it will never take place without S orbital. The other thing that you need to know is hybridized orbital we have, have characters of all the orbitals that is being mixed. That means this hybridized orbital will have a character of S and will have a character of P as well. This broadness in the hybridized orbit, orbital and the tip is the character of S because this S orbital is broader than P orbital. And S orbital is symmetrical all around. This non-symmetric is the character of P. This having two lobes is the character of P. Although both of them are not identical as P orbitals, but the hybridized orbital has two lobes and this is the character of P orbital. Hybridized orbital is broader. This is the character of S orbital. So the thing that you need to remember is whenever hybridization is done, S orbital is always there. The number of hybridized orbitals generated is equal to the number of orbitals that you have mixed. And third, the hybridized orbital will have a character of all the orbitals that have been mixed. Now I have some compounds or some intermediates written for you. The best thing to do is you pause your video, get your answers and then play it again and then check your answers. What you have to do is you have to find the hybridization state of different atoms, of central atoms in each of the compounds. Or uh, the atom in which you have star mark. For those atoms, you have to find out the hybridization state. If you already know this, then go ahead, do it and check your answer. In case you don't know it, then I'm solving few of them, then after learning it, you solve rest of them on your own. You have to do it, just sitting back and watching will not help my brothers and sisters. Now, how to go about this? Uh, uh, let us see. Let's talk about the first intermediate, that is methyl carbocation. In this, in this intermediate, I can see carbon has three valency fulfilled by hydrogen. It will ha have a bond like this. Carbon is having three bonds with hydrogen and it has a plus charge and we have already seen that plus charge means empty orbital. Now this empty orbital will not be hybridized. This will be kept unhybridized as we have seen in the previous video lecture. If we have opened this video lecture then go back, watch it and then listen to that once again. Apart from that empty orbital, carbon has three bonds with hydrogen. And now these are sigma bonds, because the first bond formed between two atoms is always sigma bond. And sigma bond is formed by hybridized orbital as we have already seen. So carbon making three sigma bonds requires three hybridized orbitals. Now to form three hybridized orbitals, we have to mix three pure orbitals. And we have already seen that whenever you have a mixing, there has to have at least one S orbital. So we need three hybridized orbitals. So to have three hybridized orbitals, we need to mix three pure orbitals. One of them will always be S. Rest of them two will be P. So we write it as SP2. Two will be in superscript 
this, sign, this, this means that the P2 means there are two P orbitals and we don't write S1, we just write S. So the hybridization state of carbon atom in this methyl carbocation is sp2. Similarly, if we talk about this free radical, then uh, look for the bonds, look for sigma bonds. For hybridization, in three cases we have hybridization, for sigma bond, for negative charge, for lone pair. So to find hybridization state, look for these three. For look for sigma bond, look for negative charge, look for lone pair. So of sigma bond, there are three sigma bonds of hydrogen. I don't see any negative charge, I don't see any lone pair. So all there is, is three sigma bonds. For three sigma bonds, you require three hybridized orbitals. This free radical will reside in a pure P orbital as we have already seen. So all you require is three hybridized orbital. Three hybridized orbital will get from three pure P orbital. And uh, one of them will always be S and rest of the two will be P. So we write it as SP2. So the hybridization state of carbon in methyl free radical is SP2. Similarly, in methyl anion, look for negative charge, look for sigma bond, look for lone pair. Now there are three sigma bonds because there are three hydrogen atoms. There is one negative charge. Negative charge, the orbital which is having negative charge, or the orbital which is having that electron from the outer source, will have to be kept in hybridized state. As we have already seen, if there are two electrons kept in the same orbital, that orbital has to be hybridized to offer more room to those two electrons so that there is lesser inter-electronic repulsion. So I require four hybridized orbitals in this case. Three for sigma bonds, one for negative charge. So altogether I require four hybridized orbitals. And to have four hybridized orbitals, I need to mix four pure P orbitals. One of them will always be S. Without S, you don't have hybridization for a reason. We'll be looking at later. And three of them will be P. So the hybridization state of carbon in this methyl anion is sp3. Next we have ethene. And uh, ethene, both the carbons are identical. So let's calculate the hybridization for any one of them. If I look at this carbon atom, this carbon is making two bonds with the other carbon and two with hydrogen. The bond with hydrogen will be a sigma bond because hydrogen is monovalent. The first bond between two atoms is always sigma bond. So the bond with two hydrogen will be sigma. So carbon makes two sigma bond with two hydrogen. Now the, this bond between two carbon, there are two bonds. The first bond will always be sigma. And the next will be pi, the third will be pi. Now, now let's quickly understand why the second bond has to be the pi bond. Uh, look, uh, you must be knowing that uh, P orbitals in space is oriented like this. Uh, one of the P orbitals along x-axis that is called Px. Suppose the blue marker is Px and one of the orbital is along x-axis, y-axis that is called Py and one of the orbital is along z-axis that is called Pz. Now suppose they are oriented like this, perpendicular to each other along the axis. This is the orientation of P orbital in any atom. So this is an atom having P orbital that is going to make bond and suppose this is, a, or, uh, this is the orientation of P orbitals in another atom. This is along also the axis and these are also perpendicular to each other. But these two atoms are approaching each other slowly, slowly, slowly. They approach and they made a bond here. They overlap these two orbitals and they made a bond. So the first bond, whether these two approach or these two approach or these two approach or these two approach, whichever orbitals approach. The first approach will always be head on. So the first bond between these two atoms, any two atoms for that matter, will be a sigma bond. I suppose the first bond is formed. This is, happens to be a sigma bond. Now what about the next bond? If you look about the orbitals, next orbitals, if you look about at vertical orbitals, now the two vertical orbitals in the two atoms are parallel to each other. And the two horizontal left orbitals are also parallel to each other. So if you want to have overlapping between the two vertical orbitals, it has to have, it, it has to be a sideways overlapping. You can't have head-on. If you have head-on, then this bond will break. You can't break this bond. You cannot have head-on between these two because this bond will break. Once this bond is formed, the next option left is only to have sideways overlapping because you cannot, cannot have next head-on overlapping. That's why the bond formed between two atoms, the first bond is always sigma by head-on overlapping. The next possibility of sigma is not there.